Good night, everybody. Well, good day, I should say. It's kind of late. At the store today, um, 6 p.m., and it's looking like it's 3 a.m. Oh, a lot of people tonight. Um, so, I don't know. I'm seeing some new faces in here. I don't know um, how caught up you guys are. Um, I have been using my platform to talk about some of the stuff that I've gone through, um, specifically with being gang stalked in Toronto. Um, I'm sharing the link to my YouTube in my stories. I also have a post that I made from about a year ago that's um, that I, I had archived um, for business purposes, but now it's unarchived, so it's on my page. You can go to that post. I'm going to link it in my stories as well. You can go to that post and you can kind of like skip through and you can kind of see some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, I want to first and foremost say like having to talk about this stuff is kind of, it's not kind of, it's actually really upsetting um, just because of the way I feel like I've been violated. I am definitely a person who has always been very respectful to other people. I've stayed out of people's face. I've stayed out of drama. Um, I've, you, I've never really had conflict with anyone, to be honest with you. Now, that's not to say I haven't had people hating on me and my success, that, and, and we all do, and that's not to say that I haven't had people or other businesses specifically, because otherwise there's, there's really been no one else, but maybe other boutiques around um, that have felt like, we do this and you do this, or we, sh we share the same customer base and we're kind of irritated that you're doing so well or whatever the case is and then you know there's always little drama with people where it's like i'm in the mall how comes you're now getting in the mall you're copying me or um you know i sell this bubble jacket and you sell it and you know like just petty childish things that i think you know sometimes i don't know maybe it's just being young maybe it's being women that people get caught up in it's really stupid but nothing significant enough um for the stuff that I've I've had to deal with. So I've kind of delayed on this part because Oakville Place Mall was probably the worst experience of my life of the whole year. Um to kind of surmise or or to summarize I should say um where we were before I was talking about how Essentially, and I don't have any proof of this. This is the thing. I don't have any proof of this. I was dating someone. Obviously, they were involved in something and some sort of lifestyle. And then I got caught up in their mess, in their drama. Um, it was one thing that they wanted me away from this person, which let me tell you, okay, my ability to leave people alone is above average let me let me give you an example when i found out that my dad had gone against me in this situation i didn't even need a conversation about that and my dad i would describe as like my best friend um in the world like other than like outside of like my kids my family like my dad was the closest person to me it really is not nothing for me to leave anybody alone. I'm just built like that. I'm just wired like that. It is what it is. There's no one that could come into my life that I can ascertain is not good for me. Make a decision by myself in my heart without a discussion. Bye. That's it. And, and people have tried to guilt me my whole life about that. Like you ghost people. You don't give them a chance. Give you a chance to do what? You don't need another chance. You've obviously done something that's made me feel that you're a detriment or a danger to me, and that's why I walk away. So for me, if they just wanted me to be away from this person, that would have been fine. But it was the fact that after the fact, 
how far they felt the need to go. So you guys, I'm going to post a link to my YouTube. You guys can check that out. But, you know, let me tell you what gang stalking is. Gang stalking is where, okay, let me give you an example. Just in case people think I'm out of my mind, okay? Say, for example, um, a builder buys a plot of land and 20 people are living there. And they've got to the last 19 people, they've paid them off and those people have moved. And there's the last house that's there. And, they, and that last house, if they don't get that sold or they can't get that person off the property, then they can't build whatever they want on the, on the piece of land. What they'll do is they'll go to a group that, and, and that a group of gang stalkers, that's what they do. And this group is essentially supposed to get this person off. So they will bully this person this, until this person leaves. If that means that they're throwing things through your window, they're following you everywhere you go, um, they, they're tapping your phones, whatever they need to do to frighten you. Because what they do is they, they operate in such a way where you can have no peace ever. Like you're scared to come out of your house. You know that hopping on your phone, somebody's watching you, people are monitoring you, they're checking your mail, they're tampering with your employment, they're calling your job, things like that, okay? And worse. So this is what I was going through. So if you guys go on my profile and you kind of check that post, you'll see all the stuff that I knew was happening. Now, the way they do it is they do things that are, it's not enough that they're just watching you and observing you without you knowing. If they wanted to do that without you knowing, you wouldn't know. They're doing it so that you know that they're doing it. But it's so subtle, it's not something that you can complain about. And if you were being stalked by just one human being, one person, or five people, then we have five people we can pursue. But if we rope other people in, then nobody can really be held accountable. Because, for example, so what was happening in Oakville when I opened my store is every day around the clock, all the customers that were coming in were being very verbally abusive. And they weren't being abusive in like screaming and raising their voice and whatever. They would all come in and say like the same four or five things. So they would talk about like, oh, these clothes are so sexy or just make very ridiculous comments that are me meant to be triggering to you. Or they'll say, um, oh, um, I saw this review on your page that that was this or that. In all my years of being in business, in all my years of being in business, if you go on my Google profile, all the bad reviews on my Google profile only happened this year. This 2023. Of all the years I've been in business, and I started this business in 2020, 2014. As a matter of fact, I didn't even open that Google page. I didn't even start that. I found a Google page that was, that was made for me before and I deleted it. And now all of a sudden I have a Google page and there are horrible reviews on my Google page. Things that were people coming in, making drama, causing nonsense to start. And it was, <laughs> put it this way, the fact that they did that in front of my kids as my kids were working they did it at Vaughn Mills as well um, but I did the bulk the bulk of the work at Oakville place and um, Oakville is more of a deserted place and I don't have a network in Oakville like we were just expanding in that mall to just you know new customers or whatnot and what was really crazy about it was everybody coming to our store was traveling from Toronto was leaving Vaughn that they could go to, which was in Toronto and traveling to Oakville. And they would come in and they would say things like, um, stuff like, oh, I, I'm trying to remember verbatim. Things like, oh, um, your store's gonna close or, oh, you're gonna be out of business or like they were basically almost like, letting me know that they wanted to put me out of business, okay? 
On top of this happening like every single day that I go to work, people are coming into my store to cause drama, to say very rude, triggering things, you know, in front of my children. Um, I have to actually, I'll post this picture of the way our store was positioned um, in Oakville. La Vie en Rose was directly in front of us. And the people in there used to sit there and stare at us without blinking in the most hostile way ever all day long. If I had developed a friendship with a manager in another store, say the store downstairs, the urban behavior or whatever, they would go down there. Me and the manager would be good. Everything would be lovely. They're like, yeah, I'm going to come and buy a, a dress for my daughter's graduation, etc., etc. By the time I know it, the next day, she's no longer talking to me. She's avoiding eye contact with me in the hallway. She's like crossing to go to the other side, refusing to speak with me. Um, I started with a very good relationship with management. All of a sudden, management doesn't want to talk to me. They're refusing my calls. They're not responding to my emails. It was just like, it was very obvious that people were slandering me. And on top of that, I remember even just to chew, I remember one particular time a lady came in and she was looking for her size and she was complaining that she didn't have her size. Like, first of all, you tell me why. You tell me why. How do I know why? How do I know why? First of all, let me just explain. I'm in a very triggered state of mind and I take things personally because people have been messing with me for two years. So anytime anybody tries to come and make it seem like I'm making things up, or if you start that, I'll just block you off my page. Don't gaslight me. Don't start with me. Don't gaslight me. We're not doing that today. Thank you. Um, I remember a time a lady came into our store. She was asking for her size. We're not going to have sizes for middle-aged women because the store is not for that demographic. It's very obvious from our marketing, from our models, everybody in general, we're not, we're not for that. Hold up. Yeah. So we are, we are not a store for middle aged women. We're not about that at all. Um, from the time we've started, it's always been girls of a certain age. It's always been, um, very, like the clothes have been pretty sexy. It's always been young. It's always been youthful. It's always been crap like that. So for someone to come in in their fifties to be attracted to the store and come in was, you know, we have them, they come in and actually at Vaughn Mills, we had this a lot where older women would come in, um, and it would be very cute. It would just be cute to us. And we're like, yeah, we wish we had something for you. And they would joke. They're like, I know you don't have anything for me, but it's a new store. I just want to come say hi. And it would be cute. And I would talk to them and have a good day. And we would call it a day. Um, because again, it's very obvious that we don't have stuff for you. She came in and she was looking for her size. And I just let my daughter deal with it. And I kind of stood back. Um, and my daughter was like... Um, I'm sorry, we don't have that size, unfortunately. And then I remember leaving the store for a bit to talk to the manager next door. And I come back and she stops in the middle of the hallway. And she says to some random stranger how um, she can't believe that we don't have sizes and all this kind of stuff. And then she was just going off. So when I saw that, I stopped the conversation I was having in the hallway. And I, I went up to her and I was like, is everything okay? And she, and immediately she kind of got shocked because I guess I wasn't supposed to see that. And she kind of stuttered a bit and scantered off. And I realized that's probably what they were doing. They were probably going into our store, creating some sort of conflict or creating some sort of issue. And you know, for anybody that knows when you work in retail, you have to really brace yourself for just everything that's coming your way. You have to brace yourself for customers coming in and, you know, being upset about all kinds of things that are easily resolvable, whatever the case is. And so it's like, we have to put up with disrespect 
we have to put up with people doing and saying all kinds of things that are insane and we can't do too much about it. Like, who are we going to complain to? Because if we do anything, if we say, listen, ma'am, we, we just are not that type of store. We don't have stuff for you. Then essentially someone's going to either complain to the mall or put a Google review or whatever the case is. So it's like we are constantly, especially being in busy, busy malls, we're constantly dealing with that. We have stretch, stretches of periods where we never have an issue because a normal human being comes into a store. They're looking for something. They go through, you give them amazing customer service and they go home. It's, there is literally never a reason to have an issue. And we had a customer service sort of process where, and it was a 12 self, 12 step, sorry, process where we give people such amazing service. Like we go out of our way to get, like people would constantly say that people would come out, come back and, hug me or hug one of, you know, our staff and be like, thank you so much. Here's the pictures of my engagement party. Here's the pictures at the wedding. Can you guys post it? Blah, blah, blah. Like we've always had a good relationship. So to see these things happen was so incredibly heartbreaking. And, you know, this is the part I think that nobody maybe wants me to say, but I don't care. When I went to Vaughn police to go report this situation, there was one time I came and they refused me talking to the officer that I had talked to before. They told me the officer wasn't there. And I sat there and waited 45 minutes while I was supposed to be at work. I was supposed to have gone to work. I waited 45 minutes. No one came out. I said, okay, whatever. I'll go to work. I drove to Oakville. Would you not believe, would you not believe that the same officers from Vaughn were the same ones that turned up in the food court at Oakville Place Mall? in plain clothes, out of uniform. I was in the food court, um, sitting there doing interviews with staff, potential staff that I wanted to hire. And they came in in a very matter of fact, uniform way. And they were sitting around us. Um, they were walking past my store after the fact. Um, swarming me essentially in the food court. I think this is about September, September of last year. Was it September? Yes, September of last year when I was just opening my store. This was the first time that I realized exactly how crazy whatever this, this is that happened was. It's one thing if you're thinking it's just like these random criminals that are a part of this, but it's a totally different thing when it's like official, like police now are coming around. They don't want me to make a report about this. They don't want me to talk about this. I'm, I'm a woman, mind you. I'm a young woman. I have two children. Um, and like, I work so hard and I have worked so hard on this business. Like 12 hour days are just normal. And, and I don't want to say that I'm the only one who works hard. Everybody works hard. Um, anybody in business works hard and anybody who has a mall location works extremely hard. But to have two was insane, like not much sleep at all. So I think that's when I started to realize, first of all, like how organized this thing is, how much money is behind this. Um, and then it started to dawn on me, like, this might just not be random people. This is huge. Um, that was the beginning of the Oakville Place situation. Um, it was crazy. I understand why mall management didn't even really want to talk to me about um, what was going on or, the, or any odd things that were happening. They didn't want to be a part of it. And that's the thing about, I guess, the whole gang stalking situation is how easy it is to get people involved. I went from being completely, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I was shocked when people close to me would turn on me, but I, I can't say I would be completely heartbroken because... I'm kind of used to seeing people in that light. I'm kind of used to that behavior from people. It doesn't shock me. Um, 
not even disappointed to be honest i kind of just always expect people to behave how they're going to behave i just expect people to be who they're going to be it is what it is um but that's when i started to realize that people weren't really in control of what they were going to do because it was essentially like you know, this girl is involved in whatever this girl's involved in or whatever is happening to her. And now people are showing up outside of my job or people are showing up outside of my home. And they're saying that I should just continue taking her phone calls and find out information and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So why not? Just to get these people away from me. That's essentially what started happening with everybody in my network. Everybody in my network, essentially, there would be a period where, so say I called a friend that I haven't spoken to in a while, or they called me, or they text me, or they emailed me, whatever the case is. It would go from them refusing to communicate with me for a bit. So I'm calling them, I'm texting them back, I'm not hearing back from them. Okay, fine, they're avoiding me. And then all of a sudden, they start responding to me out of nowhere, but they're nervous now. Like at this point, they are, they're holding back. They're not being themselves. Their voice is shaking when they're talking to me. They're nervous. They're breathless on the call. They're bre like, you can tell that something is up. So I've essentially already, th these people were trying to isolate me and not we're trying to, we're very successful in isolating me from my social networks and then my business networks, which is very important to me because you're talking about like people I know in the community, influencers, um, you know, people that, that have a lot of followers, people that we can gift clothing to or, um, you know, dress for certain events and that they would tag us, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if not, if there were a person that we would work with and that they would still agree to work with us, they would post us and we would get nothing from the engagement. Nothing. Not one new follower, not one like, nothing. As a matter of fact, if you look at my IG now, if I post anything on my Instagram, literally two likes. Nobody wants to come into, to even look at our stories. And, you know, in my opinion, I think it's either one of two things. I think it's either people in the community that know what's going on and what's happening because it's gone on for so long. Like I said, it's been like a year. Or it's been people who have been intimidated and just don't want to be around it. They don't want to be a part of it. Um, and it's crazy because in the beginning, if you, if you go to that first post that I made where I was talking about it, there was like, I don't want to be wrong, but I feel like there was maybe 57 comments, 130, 30 people liked the picture. Um, there were so many people that contacted me in my, you know, in my DMs and they were like, I hope you're okay. Hope everything's okay, etc., etc. Um, so we didn't get to 12,000 followers by the followers being fake. My followers are not fake. I've never purchased followers. I do. I've, in fact, I delete followers that I feel like are fake. I don't want that. I want true engagement. I want real people that I know and that I care about. As it stands with my followers, I don't know who these people are. Um, a lot of people, like the, the gentleman that just asked me why, I'm not engaging in those kind of, I don't care how I come off. I don't care how rude I come off. If people have gone through what I went through, they would be even worse. Um, don't ask me that kind of gaslighting, triggering question as to why something like that is happening to me. I have absolutely no clue. None at all. None at all. Um, I feel like my original followers... Um, who I originally had, I feel like those followers know what's going on. I feel like there's been a lot of gossip. There's been a lot of word on the streets. I feel like a bunch of Latin followers or Hispanic, Hispanic followers that I have, I have no idea where they came from. Those are not my followers. I consider those gang stalkers. I don't know these people at all. I don't have relationships with them. Um, 
us being in the mall, of course, there's going to be people, random people that come in the mall. We used to have a hard time getting people to follow our Instagram um, from being in the mall. We used to push out a lot. Hey, follow us on Instagram, whatever the case is. But we had a lot of men following us out of nowhere. Actually, those are the followers that it started with. A whole bunch of men. And not even men in Canada. Men in their profiles in Spanish or Portuguese, and they're not even from this country. And I'm thinking, I don't have any ads that are running in any other country. And we don't, we sell women's clothing. So it's like anybody who runs ads on Instagram, you know, like you might have to complain to Instagram about the ad because the ad doesn't do very well. But for you to run an ad and pay like, I don't know, $150 for an ad and get like a thousand followers is, is kind of nuts. You know, can you hear me? That's crazy that you can't hear anything. I'm going to have to listen to this again. I feel like it's just always nonsense with, can you hear me now? Okay. Did you, were you guys hearing me the whole time? I don't know if you couldn't hear me. Okay. You can hear me. All right. So, okay. Sorry about that, babe. So to, to kind of bring you up to speed, I'm going to post this on my YouTube and I'm going to keep posting about it. I get so, I honestly get so irritated with like how violated I feel by this whole Okay, that's good. I kind of get annoyed by how violated I feel by this whole situation, but I have to continuously remind myself, like, I am not the only one that's gone through the situation. I'm not the only person who's been gang stalked. I'm not the only person who dated the wrong person and found themselves in some drama because of this person's affiliation. I have to remind myself of that. Let me tell you guys how crazy this stuff is. These people were accessing my home. And, and like, I found, I live alone. From the time I was in this relationship, I never got with anybody else. Actually, even if I wanted to date somebody, you're being gang stalked. They're going to chase this person out of your life. Okay, nobody's going to, no man is going to stick around or no human being would. Like, why would they? I found hair in my bed, like, like other people's hair, hair strands in my bed. I would find handprints in my shower. So we have like a, a all glass shower. You guys might see on maybe one of my personal pages, the shower is just encased by glass. One day I come home and I find fingerprints like this, nails long as hell. Like I never have my nails done. And I can't have my nails done because I work in retail. If anybody's ever worked in retail, whether it's zipping clothes, tagging clothes, putting things away, like working the machine, whatever it is, like nails get in the way. So just for me, I end up ruining my manicures anyway. So it doesn't make any sense. These people were accessing my home. And it's kind of like fighting an enemy or, or, or battling an enemy that's able to replicate itself at a, an alarmingly fast rate. So as soon as it comes around and if that person's your friend and it'll, it, they'll, they will send people to talk to your friends, to destroy your reputation, to destroy your business reputation, to talk about how you make money, to lie on you. People you talk to now have information about you that you never gave anyone. Like say for example, if I was working on a project on my laptop um, and I was just talking to suppliers about buying tags for the clothing to like stitch into our clothing, I would be talking to some random person, a random influencer online and they would say something, and this is a real story. I literally was talking to a supplier about putting tags in my clothing, and I wanted to send this influencer clothing, and the first conversation with her was fine. By the second conversation, she was saying things like, oh, I know you're gonna have tags in your clothing. 
And it's like, what? And that's one of the ways how a lot of the times you would kind of find out that the person you're talking to is not 100% trustable anyway, is that it's almost like they spoke to the person before, gave them a little profile on you, like a little file folder on everything you have going on. And, and then now this person is repeating things that you never told them. And one of the things about me is like, I'm really not a confrontational person. I'm not a person who likes arguing with people all the time. I don't like bickering with people. I don't like, like, this is not me. So half the time I'm like a deer in headlights when somebody says something or does something weird, I'm literally just stunned. I'm sitting there like, how did she know about that? Or I'm going through in my head, like, did I tell my kids about this? Or like, how did this come about? It has been literally, if you can only imagine, so like just to summarize, if you can only imagine my cameras with Bell, my security cameras with Bell were tampered with, were, were being accessed essentially. Um, they were watching me on camera. So a lot of times when we came to work in the morning, we would unplug the cameras in the store just so that we wouldn't have to sit down under surveillance all day. The staff that I hired would quit in tears, would call me and be like, listen, I can't work here anymore. And I would have to leave Vaughn and race over to Oakville to try to console someone that wants to leave right now. Like in tears, stepping into the hallway, looking like this both ways, running to the bus stop, having their parents pick them up, doesn't want to talk to me, doesn't want to explain to me what's going on. I'm getting terrified. The new person that I'm, I'm, I have come in, all of a sudden this girl is working there, very friendly, things go missing, all of our stock in the back go missing, the security guards are weird, um, they say very weird things to you, uh, they behave in a weird way, all of, it's, it's almost like they planted this security guard, this little Hispanic security guard to work there. And now all of a sudden the people I used to, I don't need, I'm not even close to these other managers, but once you work in retail, you know, you might have people that you pass by, you're like, Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? Whatever. All of a sudden, no one's saying good morning to you anymore. No one's engaging with you anymore. Everybody seems to, it's kind of like there's a rumor floating around around about you that you don't know what it is. The people, they want to isolate you from all your organic network and then push in their people for you to be friends with. So, you know, for me, I have gut feelings about things. I'm pretty intuitive. By the time, I don't think most people pay that much attention, but by the time most people realize like, hey, all these new people that I'm friends with and all these new relationships and all these opportunities and they're always giving you opportunities sending models your way sending influencers your way sending somebody who wants to sell you a new pos system sending somebody who wa they want to be involved in every way so by the time you realize what's going on you are so stuck in this situation that you have to walk away without anything. Some guy came in to sell us a POS system from like some bootleg company I've never heard of. Now he wants to take me out on a date. Now this is happening. Now that is happening. Like literally when my Instagram got hacked and we got signed out of the Instagram and signed into a new Instagram and it said, no way. I can't remember if it said no way out or no way, but I took it to me no way out. By the time that happened, I just kind of figured to myself, I can see why people are stuck in this. So, you know, for me, I feel like through the course of the year, information has come to me in like a very roundabout way. I've kind of figured out and worked out like, okay, just based on common, just deductive reasoning, like what this could mean and what that's about and why did this happen and like, okay. I wear natural, I usually wear my natural hair, but even if I didn't, there's hair in my bed, a strand of hair in my bed that's obviously from like somebody who's of a different race. My hair is very kinky and curly, right? What justification, like put it this way, 
if I were in a relationship, that would have dead caused the problem. That would have caused a problem in my relationship. Like someone literally was in my bed. Um, things we would have in cabinets would be moved around in the cabinets or it would come out of one cabinet and then put into a drawer somewhere else. And this is so ridiculous because this is not even something I would ask my, I would ask my kids like, hey, did this happen or did you move it? Because my kids are not even moving the things that they should be moving around in their room. They're definitely not coming into the cupboard and moving something around. Like that's not happening. Um, my phone was tapped to the point where they could just intercept the call. And that did happen a couple times where I'm calling somewhere, but I'm pretty well aware that who I'm speaking with is not where I'm calling. Like I'm hearing, like I remember calling Bell one time. That is no good. I remember calling Bell one time. Don't put it back. Throw it out. Kids, again, this girl takes a bottle of juice out of the fridge. It's no good. She try to put it back in the fridge. These are definitely not the type of people that are going to rearrange the ornaments in my cupboard. For sure. Um, the craziest thing that would happen is things would move from our house into the store. The back door of the store had a combination lock. It wasn't a lock you needed, like you could have a key for. You had to actually put a code in so they couldn't get to the back. But they would leave things at the, behind the cash counter. So what was it, Maddie, that ended up back there? Your lash glue? And what else? There was something else that ended up behind the cash counter. What was it? Her ring. One of my daughter's rings which she had misplaced, which we hadn't seen for a while. And it was broken. It was hammered down and it was, it ended up behind the, so the jewel came off of it and it was behind our cash counter. And this is at Von Mills Mall. So you're very well aware that they can access your store, that they can, I knew they could access the store at Oakville because they never gave us a key to the, the back door. Um, which was the back hallway of our store. We had a key to the front and there were security cameras and the alarm was set there, but there was nothing to the back door. Um, <clears throat> I knew that they were accessing our security camera. They is, okay, so I know you just came into the, uh, to the live. So babe, essentially I was dating someone and I started getting gang stalked after he ghosted me. He just like, he left the house, he moved out one night at midnight, and then from the day he moved out, um, just these random men have never left me alone. Predominantly, it's been Hispanic people, Portuguese people. I know it's from him because he speaks Portuguese. Um, Leanne, wild is an understatement. It's an understatement. Wild is an understatement. I've, I've dealt with this for a year. Um... Yeah, I think those people, those, if I have to be honest, I think those people try to kidnap me at least once. There was once, one time I had a gut feeling. I did a U-turn and went back. I was supposed to meet up with someone. I did a U-turn and went back home. Um, it's definitely drug related. No one's going to tell me that it's not drug related. I don't care. And see, the thing is, this person's not like, this is, this is, I always say this, this is an older gentleman who had a business. So let me tell you, I have always, and call me naive, I've always assumed that drug dealers are like the people outside on the sidewalk and they they have tattoos and they listen to hip hop and they're this, that, and the third. I always assumed you're going to know a drug dealer because they're going to have the big chains and the big rings and they're going to look like, you know, what you ex what, what it looks like on TV, right? These are not street people. So I'm assuming from where I sit that these are people that deal in something else. But this person that I dated is like a regular go to home, come back from work type of guy. Like he's like me, go to work 12 hours or more, work hard and come back home. These are, you know, and, and I can't say I don't know. I've been on his job sites. I've, I've like, we used to share locations with each other. Um, you know, I know he's working. I know where he is at all times. Like we are very boring people. We work really hard, but you know what I really think it is. 
is I think that they target people like myself, people that have no criminal record, that just look like mom and pop regular. I'm a boring person. I, I will be the first to admit. People will take that for a joke. Listen, and that's the thing. I have the money and I have the ability to go out and be glamorous all the time, have the hair and the nail. I don't have the time because I'm really building something. I'm building a business and this, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I don't have the time to go shopping during business hours. I'm at work. Okay. I don't necessarily trust to just to leave my kids or my staff in my store. I don't have the time. And then there's a part of me that when I do have the time, I'm tired. I need to rest. I, re I need to rejuvenate. I need to, my brain needs to stay working, like to stay ahead of the curve because my competitors are already ready for Christmas. These people are already on Valentine's Day. Like I gotta be, you know, looking at what I have to do. So there's people who take me for a nerd or a dork or a loser because they're like, oh, Can does not this and she doesn't that and she's nobody and whatever. And I live with that. I'm used to that for so many years. I don't have time to be around people and to, to know all the gossip and all the tea and what's going on. And I generally don't like to hear negative things about people anyway. I don't like gossip. So I feel like they target people like me because I'm an easy target. I'm isolated. I'm by myself. I go to work. I come home. I barely have conversations with people and they triangulate you. They watch you for long enough to notice like, Oh, okay. And especially at the time that they, that they caught up with me, I was in a very soft space emotionally. I was very, listen, you can ask my kids. Okay. Normal me is like business. Like we're waking up at this time. We're getting this done. Da, 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 da. Like to be a, in business, you have to be very assertive. And that's how I normally would be. And I'm very hard on my kids because I expect a lot from my children. And they will tell you that. But at the time with this relationship, I got very soft. Because for the first time, I don't have to be the man in my house. I don't have to be the man of the house. So I have someone now who... You know, okay, a, a joke. Let me just check who's in the live because I don't want to say the wrong thing. A joke. There's this joke that like black people are fire alarms always are beeping because we never change the battery, which is true. My fire alarms, every single one of them had a low battery for a year. And I now all of a sudden have someone who is not even going to ask me to change the batteries. They're just going to go buy a ladder, get up, buy the batteries and change it. I have someone who's going to be there, who's going to, oh, I need to move some stuff. They'll get a, a van, they'll carry it, they'll do it. So I got into like, you know, a very soft space. Anybody here who's married or anybody here who's in a serious relationship, you know what I'm talking about. You don't need to defend yourself. If you go somewhere and they, they stole your money at the store, they scammed you, you're not going to come back to the store to ask for your money by yourself. Your husband's going to take the lead. He's going to talk. He's going to, so you know, you're protected. You're in a safe space. And being that, that makes you soft. That makes you more lassodaisical. So by the time they came around me, I was kind of in that space emotionally. So I know I looked like a huge target. I was, I didn't look like a girl who was going to fight back. I looked like a person who was just going to roll up in a ball and cry. And to be honest with you, in the beginning, I did do that. I was just crying. I was like, what the hell is going on? I've never seen anything like this. But, you know, and I told the police, I'm like, I think this is what my ex is going through. I think my ex is stuck in this situation. I think, and it wasn't just him. From the time I entered into this situation, a bunch of people that I've encountered have just looked like little soft people little nice people that have gotten stuck into whatever this is and they're just terrified they just so um mariama i i'm talking about um being gang stopped essentially just people i dated someone long story short i dated someone and then i started being gang stopped from there People started, weird men started showing up to my store. People started driving around my home. People were involved in anything that I was doing. These people really felt like they were controlling me. They really felt like my life was theirs. Um, 
N nothing I at the time I was in complete control of a, wh whether that was my email excuse me whether my bank accounts were being accessed anything you could do on a phone is being accessed whatever I had they knew about it was a full year of that and what I think really happened is I think that somebody outside the country paid and when I say outside the country I mean in Brazil because you know that's where all the fake followers were coming from. Everybody was located in Brazil. These, these guys that were following me, these pages that were following me, everything was located in Brazil. Whenever I would go through the page and you know somebody posts their location, it's all in Brazil. So I think somebody paid to get rid of me out of my ex's life. And then I think after that, I think they started feeling like they could recruit me honestly to sell drugs because that the girls that were coming around to be my friends were always talking about um I don't think he played a role in it Leanne at all I think he was I think he was targeted you know what I really think I think he was trapped in something they were doing the same thing to him and I think he was trying to like pull away from that situation and I think every time he's tried to pull away from that situation, they just got him, they did the same thing back to him. And I really feel like he ran off for me not to be involved in it. I think he ran off to try to save me so I wouldn't be infected from this situation he had going on. That's what I truly think. Um, and I'll tell you why I think that. Because there was one particular story he told me that confused both of us. The whole relationship, sometimes I'd be sitting there and it'd come up in my head and I'd ask him again about this story. It was basically a story about he was living with someone, they had a child together, and, and the girl literally ghosted him, flew to Africa, had the baby over there, called him and told him about the baby and was like, didn't want to even ha keep the baby, was like, you could come get your baby. And then he's confused because this girl ghosted him, like just literally just picked up and flew out. And then when she came back, she didn't come back to Canada. She went to the States and she cut off all her friends. No one could find her. And I kept asking him, like, did you guys have a fight? What happened? And he's always like, no, nothing happened. I don't know why she behaved that way. But this was something that hurt him. And this hurt me because you're talking about a child. This hurt me. And... I was like, it's too much. Like, but I kept thinking, like, why would someone fly all the way over there? And then why would the person not even come back to Canada? Like they would go to the States and then he had no way of figuring out like where she is now, where the child is, like what's going on. Like she just ran off. He was genuinely confused when we were talking about this. He was hurt. And let me tell you something. You know, you know when somebody is hurt by some, especially men, like a man is not going to come and cry to you. They're not going to like show their emotions like that. But he was hurt by that situation. Okay. I was like, I was like, you know, I'm not understanding why anyone would do that. You know what, Leanne? Um, I'm going to say I don't think so. You see, after everything that I've gone through, I will say this. There are definitely things that I was not told, for sure. And I think that, well, not I think, I know that there were things. That, it, it's kind of like... I just saw um, uh, something that said uh, the first rule of Fight Club is that you never discuss Fight Club. It's like that. They're not allowed to discuss it. I'll tell you why. Every time I had a friend or someone I cared about that kind of like dropped off the face of the earth um, and wouldn't talk to me or became scared by the time they came back and were talking to me kind of by force, I had this one person that was around and it, it looked like they couldn't say anything to me. They couldn't verbatim be like, please leave me alone, people are after you. They couldn't say that, but it was like, they just looked at me with like a pleading look on their face. Like it, it's like they had to be able to communicate to me, like, please don't come back here 
but without saying why. And I knew exactly what was going on. This particular person, I swear to God, I went home and I cried about that because that was one of like someone who was very, very, very special to me. I don't even want to get upset. Very, very special to me as a friend. And like for me, I could see that he was being bullied. He started getting bullied at work. Like I could just, I could just see what was going on. He's not the only one. I would start having people that would come around. They would come to the store. They would try to say hi to me. And then somebody would race in behind them right after. And as soon as that person comes in and the person starts like walking around in this very like dodgy way, they would look, they would be frightened and they'd be like, okay, I gotta go. And they would run out. If this happened with one person as a logical person. You're like, okay, ABC is behaving kind of weird right now. But to be honest, this was happening with everyone. So it's not like it, it was no longer a situation where I'm being isolated from people. I was just leaving people alone. Like it was to the point where I might want to talk to somebody or I might want to like this person's a nice person to me. But I'm like, you know what? Such and such just had a new baby and she doesn't need this drama. And I would have to ghost this person. And there were times, and there was, you know, like one or two times somebody would come around, they would pass the store and I'd be behind the counter and they'd look at me and they'd be like, and they'd walk away kind of to say, yeah, I see that you ghosted me. I didn't do anything to you that hurt me. Why you would stop talking to me for no reason. And I felt helpless because it's like, girl, I'm saving your life. Okay, like I'm helping you by staying away from you because I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm going through because, and this is why I've had compassion with certain people that have come around. Like I literally would have some like random ladies come into my store and they'd have a conversation with me. They'd look around and this one particular lady grabbed my hand from behind the counter and she said to me, good luck i'm like at work and i'm like good luck what is she mind you this is in the middle of the hell like the worst part was oakville place this was in the middle of hell and i'm like why is she saying good luck to me like in a in a way it's like i read a story online about gang stalking and one of the guys wrote that he prays for some of the gang stalkers because he would have situations where people would be following him and chasing him down. And then he'd find like $10 or $20 in a puddle after they left. So say they walked this way and he was walking, he'd find money or he'd find like food or different things because these people knew what they were doing to people. These people knew that the purpose of what they were doing was to destroy people, bankrupt people, destroy their business, destroy their life drive them to insanity so that if they have to go to court, no one would believe them. And it's like, imagine you're doing that to someone and that's what you've been pushed into doing. And so now you walk around with money and you drop it because you know this person's not going to have money for lunch for today. I'm thinking to myself, listen, I think the, the craziest part of all of this is coming to terms you always expect people to be like yourself. I'm not saying there's not bad people in the world. How people can be so heartless. I've questioned humanity in going through this, how they can be so heartless. Everybody who knows me knows I am a very kind person. No doubts about, I hate that about myself, to be honest with you. I hate it. When I, with both my kids, when I, when I had my kids and I noticed that my kids are all also very kind, soft people, I was mad. I wanted to break it out of them. I get mad at them all the time. Like, listen, you got to stop that. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to this, you have to that. I hate that my kids are nice people like me. I feel like they got it from me and it's not something I can change. I've been trying to work on it my entire life, I've been trying to work on not being so nice, not being so giving, being more assertive, having stronger boundaries, not letting people get away with things. And you know, a part of me is almost grateful that this happened because 
I have been become very assertive. I do enforce my, my boundaries. Actually, sometimes I think I'm too aggressive. I, I, I will fly off. I'm not putting up with anything. I'm not playing around. A lot of the people that have come around me, like, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we were in this particular store in this location, when we were having other boutiques that we were allowing to come in, a lot of the girls were very, were the same as me. People with no boundaries, people who were too kind, people who you can push around. Actually, almost all of them. To be honest with you, not one of them had a lot of fight in them. They were always girls where it's like they wouldn't speak up for themselves. So they go around and they find these people who are very soft-spoken, who are very kind, who are very meek, and then they push you. Now, this is the thing about this as well. This is a cult. This is a cult that does this. The gang stalkers, it's a cult. It's a satanic cult, for sure, for a fact. For a fact, I'm not even debating that. I'm not even debating that. This is a cult. These people, so anything you can think about with cults online, Marilyn Manson, um, any of these things where when you join a cult, you're not allowed to talk about the fact that you're in a cult. You cannot marry anybody outside the cult. You cannot have friends outside the cult. Everything you have belongs to the cult. The leader thinks he's a god because this man really thinks he's a god. He really, he really did. And I can understand why he felt that way after a while, to be honest with you. I can. This is a cult. This is a cult. And I think that they use, they realize, they, they perfected their way of controlling and manipulating people. And then they used all of those things to be able to outsource their services to other people. So for example, there's this girl I know who's being gang stalked in the States and she used to work for Estee Lauder and she was speaking about, out about racism in Estee Lauder. And instead of them firing her, they had her gang stalked. It's been three years. The girl's being gang stalked from Estee Lauder. This is in the States. It's worse in the States than it is here. I remember when I told, um, I contacted a security service so that they could drive around my house. So this guy comes in, muscular, burly, scary looking dude, comes in, he's sitting on my couch, and I start the story. And I'm like, sir, I need protection. People are driving around my house, whatever the case is. I, I want to know what your fees are for your security systems and whatnot. Um, I was dating a guy and blah 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 as soon as i said that the man's face went white pale he's sitting like this i have never seen somebody race out of my house so quickly this guy gave me about 25 excuses why he could not help me a security company gave me so many reasons why he couldn't help me same thing with the police i was telling the police what was going on the officer almost jumped out of his skin, was terrified, was halfway out the door. He was already out of his seat, out of his chair, was halfway out the door by the time he was telling me, like, this, this is what all of them say. No one's following you. No, no, no one's following you. Um, wait, whose name? The name of my ex. <laughs> my ex's name doesn't matter. This is happening to to so many people it's not let me put it to this way it's not supposed to take a year for me to go down if i was friends with somebody it would take a matter of weeks for them to be a part of whatever was going on like they knock you down quickly no i never told the security guard his name but the guy had been in security for so many years that he's heard these stories over and over. Maddie, what time is it? 7.20? Okay. 12? Okay. The guy had been, had heard these stories so much. He's the first one that told me, he said, after he composed himself, he's like, well, at least you're not in the States. It's way worse over there. You know, in Canada, it's, it's a little bit better. I was like, what? When I started looking up gang stalking in the States, it's crazier over there. 
like military are involved like you'll have soldiers gang stalking you police gang stalking you like they have no limits over there it's crazy and they will do this to anybody to anyone and like i said the one thing about me is i'm very decisive with my decisions if i say no i'm not doing something i mean no <sighs> i'm skipping so much stuff I remember one of the police officers came to my house with another police officer who was very mentally disturbed. That guy had something happened to that guy. That guy could, the, the police officer number two could barely speak properly. Like you could physically see he wasn't okay. And I think what the point was, was to say, because I'm making all of these reports. So they brought this guy after I made the RCMP report. So now I'm making federal reports no longer with Vaughn Mills police or with Vaughn police, I'm making federal reports, right? He came and he told me, um, it's the way he was speaking. I never met this officer in my life. He's like, you know, you're not eating healthy anymore and you're not working out anymore. And you know, you can't live the same life every single day. The man was telling me about my life. And I think the other officer he brought was like a mascot. Of mental illness to show me like hey this is what's gonna happen to you if you keep making these reports and you keep resisting now the one thing about me and I'm you know God has kind of been pushing me to be myself and to be more honest about my whole self and I've always kept you know you keep parts of yourself to yourself because you're running a business it's not it's not personal but it just seems part of my journey at this point that I guess I do have to talk about this I'm very spiritual. I pray a lot. I pray so much that I literally, like I talk to God all day. Like it's, it's, it's like a running joke I have with myself. I get dressed with God. I brush my teeth with God. Like I'll pick out outfits and be like, what are we wearing today? Like, and it's like this one or this one. And, and you know, call me delusional. God be like, wear the black pants today. Do this today. Do that today. And it's like, I talk to God all the time. I'm really, really close to God. And I really feel God in my life, in every capacity, in every way. I share everything with God. If, if, if I go somewhere, I have to do, literally, if I have a decision to make, I got to talk to God first. Like, I really have to pray about it and I'll get back to you. It's one of those people that, that I'm one of those people that says, I have to pray about it. And I will get the answer. I'll get it very quickly. And when I say I'm going to pray about it, God... Listen, and this is not a joke, and I'm being honest. God answers my prayers in real time. Like if I'm standing here and I pray about something right now, God will make it happen right now. There is no delay on my prayers. I am close to God and I live a lifestyle that I really believe because I do believe that God is in your vessel. So the way you treat yourself and the way you treat your body makes it possible for God to inhabit your vessel you know, then you get the characteristics of God, which is very loving, which is very kind, which is very intelligent, because God is genius energy, which is very this, which is very that. And so I'm telling you, God was talking to me the whole time. Like I had to give control of the entire situation. I had to be like, listen, this is out of my domain. I don't know what's going on here. These people, by the time my ex ghosted me, this man did not look like himself. He was terrified. He was a mess. He was like, like you could see he's not sleeping. He's not okay. These people are Satanists and they definitely use spell work. Now, there's seven people in this live right now. If you don't believe in spell work, that's up to you. Okay. If there's any Africans in here, any West Indians, any Hispanic, actually everybody believes in spell work. Let's be, let's, let's just be clear. Everybody has heard about it. Everybody believes in it. I may have been on the fence about certain things before, but after this situation, I could tell you very much. I very much know for a fact that it's God who took me out of the situation. There is no reason why other people couldn't escape. But me, as a young girl with two girl children, not boys, two young children, got out of it. So to fast forward where we are today, nobody's following me. If I went on a live 
back in Oakville or back at Vaughn Mills, these people would be coming in and out of my store in a way like as if they owned my store. As we stand here today, people can't bother me. People, people might try to, but it's like their life has turned into a circus as a result. Now, one thing about when you pray a lot is that God will teach you patience with your prayers. Like, you know, you might say, I want a mansion. You're, you're not the person who is going to be able to handle a mansion right now. You're not making enough money for the mansion. You don't have the down payment for the mansion. So God is going to put you through things in order to get that mansion. Whether it takes one year, two years, three years is up to you and how long you're going to be, you know, are you going to pay attention to the signs that you're given? And when God says, you know, leave this job you're at because this is not the job, take a leap of faith and I'll get you another job or leave this marriage you're in or whatever. So if it takes three years or five years, it's up to you. But, you know, in my relationship with God, I've learned patience. And I've learned that no prayer is unheard. And I've learned that everything that I am asking for is going to be answered with either a yes or I'm going to give you better than what you want. So from day one, this is happening. I'm now feel now, th now this is where I'm going from the logical, factual side of the story of I'm being gang stalked to the other side of the story, which is a side that I haven't really spoken about a lot, but it needs to be spoken about because everybody in this situation knows what's going on. This is the side of knowing that you're under spiritual attack. Like you know something is going on. Everything around you is weird. It's like you're underwater all of a sudden. You don't feel well. Um, it's like so, It's like a heavy load on your head. It's like... You can't think properly to make good decisions. You're ju you just feel that things are not okay. And like I said, all of this is happening. Things are going wrong. Things are falling apart around me. But one thing I always am is very grateful. Listen, this, this is enough to make you denounce God. I'm not joking. This is enough to make you think that God does not exist or God forgot about you. All your good luck all of a sudden is gone. And I'm a person, I'm very lucky. Like, and I didn't realize how lucky I was until the luck was gone. So for example, little things like, little things I'm talking like, maybe if I go to the mall, like it's Black Friday, I'm going to find parking right in front of the door. As soon as I pull up, somebody's going to pull out. I'm going to have a spot right there. Or if I apply for something, it's going to get approved. Like everything just goes my way. Without me praying for it, I'm just in alignment all the time. And all of a sudden, nothing is going my way. All of a sudden, it's like nothing is going good. Everybody that comes into my life is somebody that would have not normally been attracted to come into my life. It's like somebody, it's like the worst variation of who should be around me. The worst. I can't even go into the kind of things. It's getting kind of long because I do want to post it to YouTube and I don't like these being too long because I want people to be able to listen to it. But I'm going to continue doing more parts. I'll talk about kind of the spiritual side of a lot of what has been going on um, in another time that I come live. I'm making a commitment to come live every day, even if it's for 30 minutes, just to kind of talk about what's going on. One thing I know for sure is... So many people are going through this in Toronto and nobody will ever talk about it because like I said, it's kind of like the first rule of Fight Club is you can't talk about Fight Club. The only reason that I can talk about it is because I am spiritually protected to a point where they can't bother me like they used to. My, my cycle is done. I am no longer the person. I'm not the same person who walked into the situation. I'm a different person. And people are very nervous about me. My neighbors were involved in this. Now my neighbors can't sleep in their house. The babies can't stay in the house. They had to move out of the house. Everybody's trying to sell their home. 
everybody that went against me is having some type of mental illness, is having some type of something's going wrong. Everybody's going bankrupt. Businesses are not making money. Businesses can't open up. Everything is going wrong with everyone around me. I was supposed to be the one that was supposed to be suffering that way, but it's almost looking like everybody but me is suffering. So if anybody's watching and you have ever in your life, let me tell you, God has a special disdain for gang stalkers, a special place for gang stalkers. And it's not, it's not going to continue after this. Like, Nothing that people do can grow. Everything is being ripped down. I think that's the message that I have to impart. I can very easily walk away from everything knowing that I'm covered and, and, and nobody can hurt me anymore and do the things that they used to do to me because I've learned my lessons and I've grown. I can walk away and be fine. But it would not sit right with me, the amount of friends I have lost to this, the amount of people who I know for a fact were good people, because like attracts like. I'm very kind. I'm very soft-spoken. I'm very, um, you know, just a lovely person to experience. So I attract the same people. So these same people are like me, very kind, very soft-spoken, beautiful human beings who don't deserve this. But the reality is, if you're if you've walked in that door and it's found you, you need to be able to walk all the way through and out the other end and people need help on how to get that done. So I'm starting with telling my story and I just want to be very clear. I'm not looking for anyone to believe me. We're done. I needed people to believe me a year ago. I needed people to be in my corner a year ago. I needed help a year ago. I do not need help. I don't need anyone to believe me. I don't need anybody to say, you know, I know somebody else it happened to. I don't care about that. This is not for you if you doubt me. This is for people who are going through this and you need help. You need advice. No one can do this journey for you. This is a solo mission. This You got to do this by yourself. You have to walk through by yourself. But, you know, the, the silver lining of it is if you come out on the other side, you come out the best version of yourself and God will reward you for all the pain that you've gone through. And you just literally have to believe that you have to believe that a new beginning is coming for you. They will rip your life down to shreds. They will rip you. They will rip everything out of your hands that you've built, your networks, your marriage, your job. They will take it all. But that's only because God is getting ready to replace it with something else. And, you know, hopefully there's somebody in this live that this message was for you. And just to let you know, two industries that if you're in that you might not want to be in and that this stuff affects a lot is if you have anything to do with the drugs in any way, shape or form, or if you have anything to do with human trafficking in any way, shape or form, get out, get out immediately. This don't think about if you don't date guys who sell drugs, do not, like, don't get involved in that stuff at all. Do not be a part of these lifestyles. Everybody that was coming into my store looked like they were a part of that type of a lifestyle. All these new customers, these new people that I don't, I'm not going to say everybody, a lot of them. And this is not a crowd that I can naturally speak to. This is not a crowd that I can naturally gravitate to that would naturally come to me. There's other boutiques in Toronto that naturally they would go to before me because those people are more cool and those people are more like aligned with that lifestyle. I'm not. I had to work really hard to try to figure out how to reach that kind of crowd, that kind of a demographic, the urban crowd. Like I had to work hard. I had to like, I was approaching it like research. I came from a corporate background. So I will say this. If you are, put it this way, and I heard somebody say this in another YouTube video, anything built in lies, God is tearing down right now. If you are in any kind of a lifestyle that you know is contributing, whether you physically are experiencing that or not, 
but you know that how you make your money is contributing to pain and suffering of other people, especially innocent people, whether you want to leave it or not, it's coming down. If your money is looking funny, leave that stuff alone and go pray. I'm going to come back. I'm going to end it now because I do have a phone call to make. Um, but I will come back. Like I said, I want to commit to coming every day. Um, I'm going to put a link to the YouTube in the stories and I'm going to do it every day. So there's hopefully going to be a link to the YouTube all the time so that you guys can check it out. Um, and just give more information. You know, it's funny. I know so many people who actually need this information. They're not in these lives right now. And I don't think they're allowed to come on my page or look at my live. Girls that I've spoken to that I know need to hear this information. Um, if I even said their names, maybe some of you in here would even know who they are by social media handles. Um, and they're not in here right now, and that's unfortunate. So um, I will come back. I'll make a commitment to whether it's like three people in this live or nobody in this live. I will continue to make my lives and put, post the information to YouTube so that you guys can get it. And I'm always, you guys are always free to comment any questions and ask me any questions. Um, and in advance, please forgive me if I'm easily triggered. I have been through hell and back for the last two years. I am shocked about how calm I am. I am shocked about how peaceful I am. I'm shocked that I'm in perfect mental health because this is meant to make you visibly messed up. So thank you guys for you know, viewing my live, listening to my story, and I'll be back tomorrow with more. Have a good night.